I keep asking you to move, see? Oh, so it's over that way. Hi, Candy. I hope you can hear me okay. I'm just trying to get set up a little bit. Um, so I want to do here... I don't know if this will help me or not. New phone. So I'm trying to figure out a new phone, too. I'm going to put that on silent. Okay. Go silent. here. Okay. Go silent. here. That didn't work. All right. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, I'm not sure. I have a hard time seeing chat with between where my camera is hanging down in front of my face <laughs> and my screen. So we'll just wait to see if anybody else pops in. I think Holly's going to pop in. And I don't know if it's better to try to read chat on my phone. Hi, Joyce. How are you? We personally didn't have any damage just maybe some debris but right up the street from us uh, we have sidewalks and then there's a patch of grass before you get to the street and a neighbor um, not even a half a mile up the street from us they had a fairly large tree in that patch of grass well it picked up the the whole patch of grass the tree and tipped it towards their house um, and there's a lot of trees down. Our neighbor across, right across from us, he had several come down and uh, butt right up against his house. So he's got a mess in his backyard. But um, yeah, we, we got hit pretty hard as far as the intensity of the wind. That was was incredible and really a little scary. <laughs> All right, so I'm just trying to think. I'm just going to wait a little while. Not a little while, but a few minutes anyway to see if anybody. Now, I have my autofocus off, but I see that it's still going. Maybe I'll put my little. I don't know if this would help if I keep my little moon rock here. If that, you know, some of those girls have that focus you freak sign. I was wondering if my little moon would work the same way. Oh no, in their ha on their house. Whew. Folks on our street. Now I haven't really ventured out beyond our neighborhood. The uh, hygiene, the uh, trees that have come down have just, I mean, really just missed the house. Oh boy, that's that's too bad. I've got Facebook messages popping in here, but at least they're not noisy anymore. That's good. And I don't know if there's more. Hello, girls. Nancy Miller is my sister. Hello, sissy. Glad, glad that you've popped in. We'll get started in just a few more minutes, I think, because I know Holly is supposed to. I told Holly 630. It's not quite 630 yet. And I want to see and make sure Karen Sue. Hi, Karen. I want to make sure that um, I have a mod. I think I think Holly might be a mod for me. Hey, 
there she is, my Holly. You have a wrench, Holly. Whew, I'm off the hook. Okay, we're good to go. Well, as some of you um, gals may remember, I have done a couple of videos where I show you what I purchased in a, a haul from either Goodwill or whatever. And um, I explained that I really, without intention, kind of started a little collection of different pins, like enamel pins or like little button pins. And they're just so adorable. My intention was to use them in art projects, but some of them, Joyce, <laughs> oh no. Now, Joyce, where are you? I forget where you're located. Nancy, we're talking about all the storms the other day and what damage that um, some of us have encountered. Anyway, my pin collection, I don't really know what to do with it. It's really quite small. But Holly and I were chatting at one point, And I also showed Holly some vintage napkins that I started to gather. And how, oh, okay, so you're on the East Coast too. Okay, that makes sense. All right. And um, Holly suggested that if I use my, my hankies to make a fabric book, maybe I could display or pin my pins onto hanky pages. So I started gathering hankies. So these are the ones that I've gathered. I want to show you. And then an amazing thing happened yesterday to increase my collection quite a bit. So I don't want to belabor this and take forever, but I'm in a co-op and we have antiques and vintage stuff in the co-op and also crafted art, handmade art stuff. So one of the gals that I've become friends with, she is an antique dealer, if you will. And so she had a couple of hankies. So she sold them to me. And this, I believe, is tatted the edge of this hanky. And it's just very plain, but the tatting, I think, is just beautiful. And you'll see a lot of them are like this. This one, I think, this looks like crochet shade stitch. Nancy and I's mom does this fine crocheted work so i'm pretty certain that this one the edging is crocheted and then of course it's embroidered very plain but very cute this one has a little bit of damage but really for my purposes will be okay and this one looks like this one may be maybe machine stitched on the corner because it's really perfect on the back. And a lot of these are like really soft. And then my husband and I, we were, oh, I know we took a trip over to that world market and it's, it's about 45 minutes from here. I know, right? Choice of tatting is, what do you say? And um, this goodwill, you purchase things by weighing it which I had never seen before. And lo and behold, they're in a little plastic bag with these two napkins. So I've got these two napkins and these definitely look machine stitched to me, but really very pretty. See, cause it's just as beautiful on the back. And then I like to visit eBay and McCary and hi, Deborah, how are you? Thanks for stopping in. So I'm a purple girl, purple and green. So I'm hoping it looks a little more bluish on my screen, but it is a really nice lavender and a dark purple with a yellow background. So that one's different. And a lot of them feel stiff, but most of them, hey, Laura, hi. I hope you weathered the storm okay. Look at this green one, girls. I hope you can see it okay if my camera is focusing all right. There you go. Oh. 
I just love that one. And I have, I have to tell you, I have full disclosure. I have a few more coming in the mail. Don't tell Ron. Okay. This one is, I'm almost sure this is tatting. Let me get one, an edge. Here we go. Look. And I did watch a video and it looks like you use a needle and then somehow you put that needle in loops. Hey, Peggy. Thanks for stopping in. And then you make little a series of little knots. Beautiful. Just beautiful. This one's plain, but gorgeous. I've got a green and a blue. And if you are searching vintage hankies, you'll see quite a few of these. This must have been a popular, although it looks a little more manly, I would think. As far as, you know, this part of the hanky, but there's quite a few of these available that you'll be able to see. And this one's just a real pretty medium blue. This one's pure linen, it says. And this looks like it's painted, but I don't think it's hand painted. I don't know. Although this, you can feel a little bit of texture of the paint. And we've got a butterfly. And some flowers. And this is a real pale. It's white, but it's, it looks like it might have just a little hue of maybe a green. But that's a white on white stitched pattern. And this one I fell in love with. This one I got off of Makari because of the purple girl was selling a lot of them but i saw this purple and i had to have it i know right laura beautiful so as i've been talking about these hankies to my neighbor who is 91 she's a dear friend of mine lives three doors down look at this one they look like little l's i guess this is so, so soft and, and the fabric is almost see-through. So I got talking to her about, we talk a lot of, about crafting and art stuff. And I was talking about the hankies that I had purchased. And she said, oh, when I was a kid, my mother belonged to a hanky of the month club. Of course, I'd never heard of it. And she said, yeah, I have those hankies here somewhere. So we were talking again yesterday. Look at this one. It's very simple, but look how pretty. Orange and red. And she said, oh, I think I know right where they are. So we had lost power and she didn't. We didn't really want her going in and out of a refrigerator and we were waiting for an order from ShopRite. And anyway, I said, I'll make you some dinner. So I went home to make her a sandwich and she said, I'm going to go look for those hankies. And uh, when you come back, if I can find them, we can look at them. So I was thrilled. And now look at how beautiful this is. And I'm assuming these are vintage. Some of them are not. Some of them you can tell. Some of them like this one has no marking on it, but <clears throat> look how pretty. A bride could carry this one, right? I know, Hanky of the Month Club. Anywho, so when I took her sandwich down to her, sure enough, she knew right where the box was. And girls, she gave them to me. I'm so stinking excited. And this one's got, this is all hand, I mean, all machine done. It's got a little green leaf pattern and flower. So <clears throat> these that I'm showing you now are ones that I have purchased and started to hoard in order to do a book made with them. This says that it was made in Switzerland.
I know, I know. It, it, it's, it's just amazing. So this is what she gave me. So these here are the ones that I had been collecting. And this is what she gave me. <clears throat> now she's 91. And these belong to her mother. So. They're old. Some of them she remembered a little bit about. Most of them she didn't. But this one she felt was the. November or fall hanky. And uh, this one is really large and it's very soft. And it's got some damage here. I'm thinking this one might have been one of her mom's favorites. Because most of them are in really good shape. I didn't iron. I didn't iron them. I was almost in tears. I just couldn't believe. I said, how about if I just take them and I'll show the girls online and then I'll bring them back to you. And she said, what am I going to do with them? I'm 91. Take them. She said they've been sitting here for four or five years. I mean, she's been here, I guess, what, six years now, five or six years. She said, I haven't done a thing with them. Yeah, that's true. That's very true, Peggy. Look at this one. And then I was saying to her, you know, these would be some nice sketching projects. So I might do that afterwards if some of you feel like hanging around and doing a little art. I might try to sketch from one of them. Some of them have a little bit of damage. I'm a little nervous about washing them. Like this one looks like it's got a little bit of dirt on the corner. But it's also got this cool little label on which I don't want to come off. I can't really read that. It says all linen. But I can't. Oh, I think it was made in Iran. You could cover a note with one hanky for her. Oh, Peggy, that's a great idea. She loves blue. Maybe I'll pick one. That's a super idea. Carry one of these. And for the girls that maybe have just come in, Nancy Miller, if she's still here, is my sister. So our dad used to always carry a hanky. And they really look like this. And I thought maybe this was machine done because it's such fine work. I don't know if you can see how small those stitches are. Let me see if I can get it to focus. There, oh, there we go. But on the back, the way that it's tied off in a couple of places, I think maybe it was done by hand. I'll tell her, Joy, she will love that. I gave her a big old kiss. Look at this. And this has got some white leaves imprinted. And this, this looks somehow, I don't know how they imprinted them. It looks like paint, but it's, you know. Where the other one, I felt like there was paint on it. This is just a very smooth surface. Now this one is just a plain little white hanky. And I'm thinking this one might be crocheted. Because that kind of looks like what my mom does. Mm. Petite point. Oh, I don't I don't know that term, Jean. What is petite point? Is that a form of tatting or well, maybe it is tat. I don't, I don't really know, girls. It's so tiny. I can't get the camera. Oh, there we go. Uh, for a second. Uh, 
This one again is plain white. Now this one, my friend's name is Betty. And I was saying to Betty, it looks like an applique, but yet it doesn't because it's kind of puffy. Oh, I keep going up too far. And, but on the back, it doesn't really look like an applique piece would be. So, I don't know. It's, there we go. Uh, there we go. Oh, thanks. They're kind of wearing off. Okay, this one. Look. The little tiny, like, daisy flowers. But then in between the flowers, there's some kind of a design as well imprinted. And this edge is a little softer and not as tight as some of the others. I know there's more of those. There's more of those in here, um, Peggy. I I just I'd never seen a hanky. Now this one is um, a different texture. It's real silky, but it's not stiff. And this one, of course, has the flags on it. It's the same on both sides, but I think both sides. I think this one's probably was hand stitched as well. But I would think on this kind of material, it would be easy to pull a thread, you know, and have a mess. But it, it's not pulled at all. It's, you know, done very well. Different. This one's very different. And I was thinking, if this edge was navy blue, it really would be striking. But that's just me. It's more of like a copper kind of. I keep avoiding this one because I think this is one of my favorite. Let me just pull it out. This one is absolutely to die for. And I'm pretty sure this is crocheted. Look at that. They, they cut the corner off. And look at that pattern. can't get it there. It's a little bit. I hope you can see it okay. I'm getting quite a stack of... Let me move these hankies off to the side. Here's another birthday one. Beautiful, beautiful turquoise color. It's got the little card right on the front. Happy birthday on this eventful day. Beautiful, right? And this one must have been uh, Betty felt a the Valentine Day one for the month of February. And she couldn't remember if her mom had crocheted some of them. Uh, she didn't really remember her mom doing that. But look how pretty that is with the dark brown. Really, Karen? Yeah, our dad always had one with him. And this little sweet one's got a little tiny edging. And let's see. A lot of this um, crochet thread is variegated. So you can see where it, you know, is darker. And then it, what they would call, I guess, now ombre. Uh, but that just looks like it got a little pico design. And then it looks hand stitched on the corner. You want to see the flag again? Sure. T 
two flags right our daddy always had a hanky Nancy I always wondered if mom still has those in his dresser Joyce did you can you see what you need to see do you want me to flip it around I can't tell how many stars there might supposed to be and then it looks the same on the back or maybe this is the front I don't know but I can't see where there's um, oh there's the stars that is the back this is the front girls hold please yeah, because the other way, it just looked like little white tick marks. But here you can actually, on this side, you can actually see the, the stars. Cool, right? This one is like some of those others that are the plain blue or the plain green. And this is a little, it's got the uh, kind of the geometric kind of angled squares. But then it's got this corner piece that's got this little fancy section. How many stars? Yeah, let's see here. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So they've got four and then three and three. So with the two flags, 20 totaled. So you've got four on the top. Oh, I'm up way too high. Sorry, girls. I'm not used to this. Four, four on that row, three and three. I know. Well, that's what my husband, my husband has allergies and he's always blowing his nose and he's like, there's no way I want that wet thing in my pocket, <laughs> that wet thing in my pocket. So he uses, you know, tissues that you can throw away. And here's another quite plain one, but so cute and so petite and adorable, dainty. And that you can tell is hand done. Because of the back, you can see where they tied off their stitches and whatnot. Nancy, I was saying Caitlin, who's uh, Nancy's daughter and my niece, um, would probably be interested in some of these because she's really into embroidering. She does um, her own designs and does really a great job with stuff. This one, it looks like, now I love this because it looks like they took a piece of lace and stitched it on the edge of the, of the hanky. But the way they, like a lot of them, they, there's a couple of stitches and then a small space and more stitches. But this one, hi, Barbara. They've done, tw they've done five stitches and then spaced it pretty much the same and then five more stitches. So it makes a really neat attached pattern. Sharon Marlowe is in the house. Hi, Sharon. And then, of course, stitched on their lace and then crocheted on the outside of the lace as well. So you've got lace and then it's edged with crocheting. So I thought that was cool. Now, these two are plain. These two are the same. They just have a little navy, and it looks like a little piece of navy cloth attached. That one's the plain side. And this one... This one must be tatting again, because it looks like that pattern when I watched the gal online. It's a little circle, and then it's got two little nibs, like two little loops on the top. Again, very plain, but just beautiful. 
that one's got a little little hole in the center this one is a tulip and it's an applique and it's really cute can you see that and then it's got the little yellow flowers that are coming out of the top of the tulip it's got them throughout the rest of the hanky just little dots of yellow Uh, Lord, I was mean to her. Oh, I didn't mean to be mean. But look, look how neatly that's stitched on. That had to have been hand-stitched on, right? Love that one. This is another birthday one. And some of these, you could tell by the way they were folded, that they were in the Hanky a Month Club. Right, that's what I think, Peggy. Little pieces of artwork. And this one's in yellow, which I'm starting to be to appreciate yellow. And I think I didn't I didn't sit them next to each other, but I think the pattern on these is probably the same, just the colors different. Okay, Nancy, enough of that. Sharon, you weren't here. Nancy Miller is my sister, not the uh, essential oil sister. She's the middle sister. Oh, these are the Christmas ones, girls. Oh, my gosh. Oh, and look at the edge. It's so totally different. It's real pointy here. You've got the poinsettia. And then little flowers with ribbons. How festive, right? And then this one. This one, some of the edging looks like it's coming a little loose. but This was similar, but a little different because it's got the little berries at the center. Now, where do you see this one? Pink. This is tatting on the edge for sure. And I guess, I, I mean, I don't know. Does anybody know how they, do they split this? Everybody's a little younger than Lori. But thanks for pointing that out, Nancy Miller. See, this has like little holes, like it's two or three rows that they've stitched along and then they've got the tatting here on the edge. Let me see if I can get that. Uh, there you go. Beautiful, right? Ugh. And this color is really cool. This looks crocheted. This one is not red and not pink. It's really a neat shade. I don't know. You probably really can't see. It'll be a good color for a lipstick. Let me see. I can't get that. Uh, if I put my. I don't know if that's any better. No, not really, huh? Oh, there we go. Beautiful, right? <laughs> Good sister. <laughs> eh, if you only knew her. Okay, this one is different. And this looks like this was used. It's very soft. And cool. This one's very different. But neat, right? And another birthday. Yeah, I think they all have maybe the same pattern. Here's pink. Now, this says it's woven in Switzerland and hand rolled in the Philippines. So, I guess it came in a roll. 
maybe with a little ribbon tied around it. I'm not sure. I did find one of these online. Oh, Sharon, I was telling the girls, my neighbor, Betty, her mother belonged to a handkerchief of the month club, and these were her mother's, and she gave them to me. And here's another yellow. Now, this one is different. That one, the pink one's roses, and this looks more like... Um, I don't know, Nancy. You're the you're the flower, the horticulturist. What kind of flower is that? Is that more like a carnation? And this one's got three, three little flowers here at the bottom of the card. This one, the pink one, it's got just one little, like a little swag. Of flowers underneath. Uh, okay, here comes the blue. Here comes the blue. Look how beautiful. Now this is similar to another one that had those little white leaves on it, but this one's done in blue. And this edging's a little different. Or it looks like it's painted and then stitched. Of course, I'm sure this is all done by a machine, this particular style. And then let me get these out of here. And then we have. Whoop! Sorry, girls, hit the napkin. I mean, hit the camera. I have a World War II. Oh, that's cool, Joyce. You should take a picture and post that so we can see it. This is a purple, little lavender, a little uh, violets, I guess you will call them. It's just amazing to me how soft some of them are. Don't get any ideas, Sharon. Now, her mother's name was Elizabeth, so there are two here that have were monogrammed with the letter E, blue and pink. Blue and pink. And there's that one. She doesn't think her mom did those. She thinks her mom that someone did them for her mom. Oh, I love this one. This is the variegated thread again. Now this um, hanky is a little heavier material, fabric wise, um, but it's the peach, peachy orange color. And this one, the tatting is real, um, real tight. Oh yes, Peggy, please do. Oh, I didn't know there were children hankies. Let me see if I can get. There you go. Gorgeous, right? I just. Now, I know Mary did um, a journal that she made with hankies. And I believe it went to the uh, Defy auction. This is months and months and months ago. And uh, she cut hers. I don't want to cut them. So I'm looking for ideas of how to make and I know it'll be large but how to make a fabric book and not cut the cut the hankies I don't want to cut them I don't want to don't make me cut them well this kind of happened by accident for me to collect them this is just a plain pink and it's that real soft silky fabric I just, I just can't even, I'm sorry. Okay, this is going to be gross. But I just can't even imagine blowing snot into something like this. Okay? Just can't. And this one. Very plain. I'm trying to see which side might be the right. I guess this is the right side. Put 
I'm gonna sleep. I know, right? That's what I said to her. I can't, you know, or I can't believe she gave them to me. But she's really not gonna do anything. Oh, I forgot about this one. This one, um, I, I guess maybe some of you girls would know, but they must have had to cut, right? Cut a section of the hanky out. See, and then stitched in between. I mean, this is definitely tatting on the on the edge. Right? But this here, now this is a plain little straight line stitch, but this here's fancy stuff, man. That's fancy schmancy stuff. Yeah, you got that right, Joyce. And this is another one where it looks like an applique, but it's it's kind of puffy. You know, the other applique ones weren't puffy, and then it gives a different coloring to that white fabric. It's just really cool. And then there again, see how it, now this might have been done by a machine. I don't, I mean, I don't know. And this is a sweet lavender one. Now this more reminds me of crocheting, but it's so small and so, excuse me, so tight. Gorgeous. Cut work is a bit different from pull work. Okay. Huh. And here's another blue. And this is a larger size. Again, very pretty. We're coming to the end, girls. This one's got a little damage on the edge. This is probably uh, one of her mom's more favorite ones. It's so incredibly soft. And it's got sweet little white flowers. And this is the last. And this says all cotton. And the edges are so different on this one. This is one of my favorites. I mean, this one looks like, you know, brand new. But where a lot of the edges were like this with the little small stitching around the edges this one's got great big like scalloped edges and then of course you've got the ribbons and the center is plain and like i said earlier for those of you that weren't here i got some more coming in the mail don't tell ron i've got seven more coming in the mail and then I think I have to stop looking at them. So I have way more, way more than I would ever need for any kind of a journal. But I don't think I can give any of them away. Did you hear me, Sharon? I don't think I can give any away. Just saying. And then she put them in this cool box, which apparently years ago had some perfume in it, but it's... You know, I'm a, I'm a box freak, too. It's got a little thing here attached where it stays open. So I got the box and I got the hanks. So there you have it. So I was thinking I would do this tomorrow, but then when Becky said she wasn't going to be on tonight, I thought, oh, well, maybe I'll just 
go ahead and go on. I thought it would be a lot more fun looking at these with you live than just doing a standalone video. So I thought if you wanted to hang out for a little while, I would uh, show you. I just uploaded the other day a uh, video doing some cards. I am Luria, not yes, and I am a shopaholic. No, and I need to give Sharon all the blue. I don't think. I don't think so. Although Sharon said she has a birthday coming up, <clears throat> we'll see. We'll see what turns up. But, you know, half of the fun for me is like, okay, so when I went into that uh, Goodwill shop where there was these huge bins and you put your stuff and you, you, you paid by the pound, finding two hankies in there. I mean, that just made my day. I got to tell you, I mean, I mean, I really do think I probably need therapy, but who can afford it, right? So I thought I would show you the cards that I made, the project, card project I made on the video that I just uploaded. And um, let's see. Oh, 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 Barbara. <laughs> so I was thinking if you haven't watched my video yet, which most of you probably haven't because only a few have watched it. Um, I thought sometimes you need a card, a greeting card for someone who may... You don't really need a gift to go along, but you want a little something extra. So I thought, well, how about, you know, making a card with a bookmark attached to it? So this is what I did. So in the video, uh, I forget what I called it, but it's, it's, I have it in my feature spot on my channel. And I just made some cards with a little bookmark on the top. So I just thought I'd show you these real quick. What did Barb say? I have a birthday coming up. No more birthdays. No more birthdays for me. Staying at 25 forever. <laughs> more thunder. Oh, Joyce, if you're getting thunder, that means it's on its way to me. So this one, I just put faith, celebrate the day. And then I was looking through earlier. I was showing uh, my girlfriend, Jean, and I were doing a craft time on um, StreamYard. And then her son called and said, Mom, can you watch the baby? So we had to cut it short. But I was showing her um, some cards that Teresa makes, Teresa Peterman. And I didn't realize or didn't remember that Teresa then puts like a ghost print of whatever stamp she uses. Uh, now, this, this I painted this flower on. But what a great idea because then you don't have to really mess with the inside. And whoever, like I'll put these in my shop whoever might want to use the card can just write their own message. So we've got that one. This is a Santoro stamp. Oh, you can be a mod. I only have one mod. Let me see if I can figure it out. Um, so if I go over here, you know, Sharon, as you know, it's hard to report, remove, hide this user, add moderator. Okay, I don't know when you get your wrench. Maybe when you type something else, like Lori is a good old soul, you know, something like that. There we go. So this is the Santoro stamp. And so I just, uh, I used my um, Distress Oxides to color around the edges. And then some other stamps to make, you know, just a little bit of a background. So I'm trying to um, get my channel. Okay, now we have a discussion of the mods. Now I can cuss. You better behave or Holly's going to put you in time out. So this little, I've been going crazy with these birds. I got a paper pad that had five or six of these birds on it. And I just love them. So I drew him on this one and then used a stamp. And this is some other stamps. I had um, watched a Rach 0113. Oh my gosh, her videos are so inspiring for me. So that's why I got started on these. 
This one is a stamp that I just then doodled. And if you like to doodle and would learn, would like to learn how to doodle, Holly and I are having fun with doodling. We've been watching Deliberately Creative. Her name is Stephanie and she is amazing. So if you want to check her out on YouTube. So this was just a stamp. And then I used the um, oxide inks as a paint. I put some of it on my work surface and used the brush. I thought that turned out cute too. And let's see what else we got here. We got one flipped over. Oh, here, another little Santoro stamp. Now these are the mini Santoro stamps. And then the last one is just a flower stamp. Oh, thanks, Sharon. So if you get a chance and you can check out my recent upload standalone video on my Pink Girly channel, would be terrific. Now, I was thinking if you guys want to hang out for a little bit. Thanks, Peggy. Um, I thought maybe I might sketch or, or, you know, really. I really appreciated if anybody was there and watched. Um, oh, the Alice stamp, like Alice in Wonderland. Oh, that sounds cool. Um, anybody who was watching Lisa, my eclectic life the other night, and she was um, trying to connect two pictures that she put in her journal. And really, I think she did a great job. But to really put herself out there, you know, live, I thought, God bless her. And now I'm thinking, I know, right, Holly? I love this box. And it's like it's embossed. I don't know if you can tell, but it's like it's embossed. But ask ask Nancy. I'm like a box and a bag freak. I mean, really, can you ever have too many? I'm talking about tote bags, okay? You broke three toes trying to get to the stamps? I got some new stamps, too. Don't tell Ron. I don't know where I put my new stamps, but anyway, I was thinking, um, or just stay and maybe sketch a little bit in my newest sketchbook. I was thinking about maybe trying some of those flowers, but flowers are really hard for me. So I don't know if I want to do that in front of everybody. What did Sharon do now? All right, so I was, where was I? I forget where I was, and I got this. Oh, I think I ran into Michael's, maybe? And this is like a really nice journal art book. With the paper's real heavy. And it was on, the, it was on their clearance shelf for five bucks, so I got it. I don't really need another oh why is it not oh there we go i don't really need another journal but you know you know how we are thanks laura so th again there's these crazy birds but these i put um a stamp behind them this i don't like when they make the books and those pages don't lay flat this guy um i don't know I think he needs a little something, something. And here I'm practicing. I want to do butterflies in my um, doodle book. Oh, thanks, Sharon. <laughs> and um, so that's in process. And then I sent a picture. One of my friends, when I lived in Pennsylvania, one of the gals I went to church with, um, she now has several grandchildren and I think they all gathered at her house to do a camp 
and she had all kinds of activities. Her name is Wendy, and she's very, very talented. And um, she had one of her granddaughters sitting with Crayola crayons just lined up on a page with a hair dryer, and all the crayons were dripping and made stripes down the page. And it was beautiful. And I sent a picture of that to Mary and said, how about this? And we both had the same thought, you know, the wrappers need to come off of those crayons before the kid sets them on fire. But I tried it. And as you can see, Maya did not melt in stripes. So it wasn't as easy as it looked. So I think this, this kind of almost looks like um, a crime scene uh, of a, uh, of a reptile because I melted my, my crayon was, is way too thick. You know how Mary will do it and then she scrapes it around and moves it. I just kind of puddled it. So it seeped into the crevice of my brand new journal. Wasn't too happy about that. Your daughter did that on. Oh, canvas would be a good idea. Anyway, I tried to then move the book and drip it although like mary said i mean the metallic crayons are really cool you probably can't see that but then i was so upset i took my paper toweling i don't know if you can tell to try to sop up some of the wax and it made it look like a reptile reptile skin so i don't know what i'm going to do with it Sharon, I can't really read all chats, so I really, really don't know what you're saying. And then I need to do something else with this. So now, girls, if you ever should be so lucky as to get a glimpse of Holly Dalton's um, doodle book, you will see that her flowers don't look all flat out like this. Hers have movement and her petals kind of just, I don't know, I can't explain it. Uh, but these are kind of, you know out there and then this is the picture i have i found this online years ago and i i printed it off and then i colored it and i used that for my profile pic because i'm not big on having my face up in there and um so i decided i wanted to try to sketch it you like the texture eh, it's okay but it just looks like a big blob thanks laura so I did the boot, and now I have daisies I'm working on. But I was thinking tonight, maybe I might do some eyeballs or something. Oh, jeez. Yeah, I guess boys would love fire. Dad's paint, he kind of caught the canvas on fire. He loved it. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Or you're sweet. I posted in Finsville, but the mods have to approve it. Oh, your journal? Okay, we'll keep an eye out for that, huh? Thanks, Sharon. So, I need to have a little sip of something here. I've got like three drinks going. All right. Doing a live, live stream is really a little nerve wracking. And so, you know, showing something you bought at a store or showing those napkins, that's one thing. But see, now it's like, oh, uh, what do you do? And then trying to keep an eye on chat. So I'm just going to do what I'm comfortable with and I'm just going to draw some eyeballs. Maybe I'll just make a page of eyeballs and probably the whole page won't get filled up. But you know, we can chat, you can hang out as you, as you want. And, um, you know, I'll stay for a little bit. I'm, I've been here an hour. Okay. That's, so that's not, I mean, I've got nothing else going on. <laughs> oh, Sharon. So these are just, I just start draw, drawing eyes and they um, turn out as they, as they will. Uh, I mean, you know, I'm um, not, thanks Peggy, I'm not um, 
copying from anything because I have a hard time, you know, replicating what somebody actually looks like. So I'm just going to make a couple of shapes here and then just make eyeballs somewhere out of my little pencil box. So what's uh, everybody else up to? I mean, a lot of us, I guess, are on the East Coast anyway, are cleaning up. Laura, your page is too white to focus. Okay, huh? If I put, well, if I put my little moon man, oh yeah, that's better. Thanks, Holly. I didn't think about that. I just have to change this a little bit. Now, I was drawing last night. I forget what I was, oh, one of my smaller books, and I started to do some eyes. And, um, Actually, what I should do is draw, if I'm going to draw eyes, I should, oh, let me do that. You know what, girls, let me do that. I'm going to, it's my life so I can do what I want, right? I have my eye book here. I'm challenging myself to draw 100 pairs of eyes. And I usually lose this book, but I just happen to flip it back here. So maybe instead of just drawing an eye that won't count... I'll draw an eye in my eye book so I can get it to count. Yes, thank you, Laura. Let me see. Let me show you my eyes. This is my 100. I was going to do 100 day challenge, but that was a little um, that was a little much. So I just switched my challenge to the 100 eye challenge. And they'll get done when they get done. So these are some of my eyeballs. But don't ask me. Holly has asked me, Sharon has asked me why eyeballs. I have no idea. I just like them. This one, not so much. You know, they don't look too bad on camera. Ooh, that one don't look too bad. Of course, if I try to, like I was saying, I was tried to sketch some eyes. I do some. Oh crap! I fell. I fell. I. Thanks, Candy. Um. And I decided I I did the nose, which it didn't turn out too bad. Lips, ah, eh, so so. And then. I thought, let me try to put hair on this chick. Oh my gosh! What a nightmare. This, this little girl got a little cross-eyed. And this one I put Dreamland on the eyelids because I did her uh, closed eyes. And then we got the Winker. I love doing this kind where it's the side. Now there's a step-by-step -step thing that you can pull up online. And really, you just follow what they say. And this is how it turns out. Love it. This one, after I got the eyes totally done, I dropped my ink pen and got a big a big blob of something here. So I just put a heart in there. That's why it's got that random heart in the eyeball. And then just trying to add some color and some dots. This one, I was trying to practice the looking down. These are supposed to be Harry Potter eyes. And I don't think he has blue eyes. I don't know. And then I wanted to do a pair with glasses. Really, Sharon? Thank you. Wow, Joyce. Are your eyelashes still really long now, Joyce? Or did they kind of like, you know, I don't know, with age kind of like break off? Or do you still have long ones? Big thunder. Oh, Joyce. There you go. There's a ton of hearts. I don't know. <laughs> Something else that was false in sixth grade. <laughs> Barbara. <laughs> ah. 
I'd do purple. I'd do green. That one's a little wonky. You know, the ones that are just one eye, they kind of look better, don't they? Just one eyeball. I have a hard time getting the eyebrows. Well, nobody's face is normal. Like, I mean, the same on both sides. So I kind of get hung up with trying to make of the eyebrows the same. This one's supposed to have, I don't know if you can see it, like the reflection of the eyelashes down in the eyeball. Yeah, whatever. This is just supposed to be an old ugly eye. All right. Is anybody asleep yet? Okay. Let's be, oh. <laughs> sometimes you just don't. Sometimes I know. Dee Dee says we all have an imagination, but sometimes... It's just not a great imagination. And that's supposed to be an animal eye, like maybe a camel. We're only at 38, kids. 38. So let's do number 39. And if anybody, you know, would like to get a piece of paper and a pencil and come on, draw an eye, draw some eyes with me. I really don't know too much about these pencils. I read a little bit about them, but I don't know if I have any lead left in this baby. Yeah, I do. Okay. Let's see. How long was in the principal's office? How was the kid sitting in the corner facing the wall? <laughs> oh. Okay. So let's see. I don't think I've ever done this before where, you know, people are watching. So I'm just going to try to make an eye shape. And this, you know, that little, oh, little, um, oh, let's get this guy. <laughs> oh, I threw on you. Thanks, Peggy. Let's sit him there for this second, see if that helps with the, all right, if anybody falls asleep, no snoring, okay, the person next to you will just give you a little nudge, this is where I have a hard time, I usually twirl my paper all around, Yeah, I would have died too, I think, Joyce. Well, I know for one I know for one thing my father wouldn't have liked it. And I didn't ever want to make my daddy upset. Uh, I guess I need an eraser. I usually just use like um, one of those mechanical pencils from the dollar store. Of course, I have a bunch of those. I just can't remember where I put them. Now, the girls that draw stuff in pen or ink, they just amaze me because I like to erase. And I don't really have this centered on the page. But, hey, this is just to draw a set of eyes. So I usually just get my my basic shape in and then I decide if I want to have like eyelid the eyelid thing happening and I just kind of make that second line and then your eyebrows <clears throat> a lot of times you know you may be inclined to put them way up high but really if you look at your face or a picture of a face 
they're really not that far above our eyes. <clears throat> so I just put my basic lines in. See, and the one looks really bigger than the other already. Eh, it's all right. <clears throat> and then, excuse me for making all that noise in your ear. I've been trying to do this little ledge under the eye lately. And then around here. And I, I'm trying to go as light as I can because I want to come in with my little stump and smudge some of this stuff. And if you make it too... Um, too hard with this kind of pencil or like the mechanical dollar store, you know, like a, a regular number two. It's hard to um, smudge that out. And um, so I try to go light here till I switch to my softer pencils. Oh, I got paddled a couple of times at school. I still can't believe that happened to me. And in where this little, I don't know what you call that little corner thing in your eye, but you, you just have the kind of like your eyeball is there. And then the, the corner. And then I just... Um, Rough in a circle. And sometimes I make this a little too big, but I'm making it really big tonight. The eyeball part. And sometimes I make the pupil down from the top. But I think I'm just going to do a little circle in the middle. And so at this point, I switch from this pencil to a pencil that's um, darker and I guess softer so that I can darken up some of these lines and then use my stump. Crust in the eye. Ooh. I got these horrible things growing on my eyelids. I want to have them whacked. Anybody know about that? All right, so I'm going to switch to either a 2B, 4B, 6B, any one of those, because that will give me a darker line. And then I want to get my... I have some, these stump things. These are the ones I really like because they're really um, sturdy. I bought some other ones that are this white color, but these are real... Um, they don't last too long. And they're, they're just not as nice. See, like this gray, the gray ones are really great. So I have a couple different sizes. And then I got a big Jagunda one here somewhere. Oh, yeah, yeah. Came like in a kit, you know, with different sizes. But if you're thinking about doing anything like this, I don't think you want these real white ones because they're a little, they're flimsier and they don't last as long. Of course, you know, I'm cheap, so I like everything to last like forever. Forever and a day. And then I'm just going to, I think I might color these with color pencil or something instead of making... them just the uh, gray or the graphite color and I color this part in here just mostly because now see these are new sketch pencils so I'm not used to that but that's not that doesn't feel right I need something that's softer and I'm and I will probably come back in and go over this with some kind of a marker but I want to be able to pick up some graphite to do some shadowing Wow, seems like they should have paddled your mom, Joyce. 
Okay, I was in a math class. Now, this is high school, okay? And you can ask my kids. I can't do math. I never could. And I never hoped to be able to do math. Okay, that's just the truth of it. And I didn't have my... I didn't have my homework. I didn't, I didn't know there was any homework. I missed it for some, for whatever reason, I missed it. Okay. This is a needable eraser in case anybody's wondering. And so she's coming around checking homework, you know, coming around to your desk and checking off whether you did your homework. And I remember my mother saying in my head, Honesty is the best policy. Honesty is the best policy. So she says to me, where's your homework? And I said, I didn't do it. I didn't realize we had homework. Out in the hall. And I got paddled for that. Thanks. Thanks for that tip, Ma. And then I'm just going to put a little more graphite in some of these areas here and then I'm going to just start I think the pencils that I use all the time are out by my chair I love my chair girls and I do stuff at night out by my chair and what one's this this one 2B I don't know so then I'm just going to come in with my stump and I just start softening these lines. Now, if you want to learn how to draw, oh, my knee's not really good. I don't know what he did to my knee. You need to watch. Kathy Arbor, it's A-R-B-O-U-R on YouTube. And she's got a whole series where she teaches you how to draw different stuff. But one of the things that she said when she was doing eyes and faces, it's like if you just put some of this around the outside edge of the eye, it just really makes a difference, and it really does. Mm, maybe I should just go in here with some graphite. It just looks like a big, empty circle. Which it is. Duh. Now, maybe, you know, if you're like a real artist and you know what you're doing, maybe you're supposed to put a patch of, you know, graphite over here somewhere or something that, you know, that you can dip into. But I don't know about any of this stuff because I just am teaching myself basically how to do, you know, what I like. I think I need my pupil to be bigger. this one's just about huh I thought I had I must have all my all my favorite pencils out not the big I think the B is supposed to be the harder 2H yeah I don't want that either Now that all eyes are on me, these will probably turn out to be really ugly. Now, I don't want to get a good... I don't want to make my paper wet. We 
might try to give this guy some bags. Packed for vacation. Now, the other thing Kathy Arbor said is that if you make little Gamasol, I use something like, um, I think it's similar to Gamasol, mineral spirits, like when I'm coloring, but I haven't tried it with just regular pencil. Get this big mamba jamba thing going here. I have my lights so bright, I have a real glare. On this white paper. I use Gamasol for color pencils, but it might help with shading. Mm. I'll have to try that. But see, then can you continue to work it? So I just felt like with the colored pencils using at least the mineral spirit, like once you, you used it, that was kind of like, you know, curtains, you were done. And I just keep working it. Keep working it. And I keep wanting to. And I don't know if it's better like doing stuff like this live. Or if it's better to do a standalone. Oh, it dries quick. Okay. Um. I've been wanting to get back to that style of art of um, Tamara Laporte. I just love faces. I love doing faces. I don't know why. See, this brand here is Faber Castell, and I kind of like and always go to this pencil. And then I bought these. Premier. Mm, they're okay. But I have a 6B and an 8B, and I get a lot more. Now, somebody else asked me too about charcoal, but I haven't used I have a couple charcoal pencils, but I haven't used them. And then Dee, Dee says, always put a little bit of that color down in the eyeball. And I kind of lost my my little um, ledge, if you will. Or under the eye. And this should come up here, I think, a little. But really, if you're not <clears throat> looking at a, an eyeball and trying to get it I don't use charcoal very often. I'm a lefty. Oh, because you, your hand gets in it and it smears? Yeah. Well, I would have that problem too, I think. <clears throat> if you're not drawing an eye, a, a particular eye, and trying to make it look, you know, exactly like, I'm just, I can't, I just can't see. I'll blame it on the fact that I can't see. And put little darker spots in here. And if my knee wasn't bothering me, I would go run and get my other pencils real quick. But 
Ain't nothing real quick the last couple of days. Hmm. Peggy, I think I was going to ask you, uh, maybe, maybe I don't have this right, but I kind of remember, didn't you do some kind of a journal that, that was for the Defy auction? I was thinking, are you a, are you a fabric gal? Do you work with a lot of fabric? Hello, Tanya. How are you feeling? I hope you're feeling well. And how are things in Florida? Oh, that jersey. Well, I'm wondering, do you have any videos where I could watch, like, for making a fabric um, journal or get some ideas? Or could you recommend somebody? You know, I mean, I can sew a little bit, but... You know, I'm not, I'm not that great. I am a full service crafter. Ooh. And how does one take part of your services? I have never made a video. Maybe you should get on that. Peggy. Come on, Laura. Let's talk Peggy into making a video. Is Laura still here? Did she have to scoop? Now, Kathy Arbor says, you know, you bring this down here and you start shaping your little nose. And she said, if you make two little, if you come down here and make like a V shape, like a, a bottom of an ice cream cone, and then you just... Make the top of an ice cream cone here. It helps you shape your nose. And a lot of times I don't really do too much with the nose. Just trying to get those nose holes in. <clears throat> Let's see if this, I wanted this darker because I want that to be um, really quite a contrast. <clears throat> but if you get that in there and it's a little too dark, you can take your needed eraser and pick up some of that. And you can pick up more too by rubbing it, but I don't want to pick up a whole, a whole lot. And I tried to do cheeks on that chick I was drawing last night. Oh, jeez. She looked like she looked like she had plastic surgery that went bad. I've been artsy farts for 55 years plus. You know, I wish I I wish when I was younger I felt like I could do more. But since finding Dee Dee Willingham really her words have encouraged me to try to do more um i just felt as when i was a younger person that i i didn't have any talent and so since i mean i did craft stuff as i got you know when i had my kids i got craft, craft stuff but when i was a younger person i just stayed away from it because i didn't think i could do it and um, I'm, I'm, I'm sad for that, really, to tell you the truth. Um, but I'm, I'm really working at, you know, this kind of thing now. I still do the crafty stuff because that's fun, too. But, man, I really would like to do this stuff more. I probably need to sharpen this. 
and I'm not sure. Yeah, yeah, I have a pencil sharpener here. Not a great one, but let's see. What can I... What do I have at the ready? Maybe I'll just grab... Oh, what's in this box? Nothing. I don't want to make a mess here, but let's just see if I can get a little... This is one of my most frustrating things is finding a decent pencil sharpener and once you start with the arthritic hands to turn the pencil you have to go back to work okay tanya thanks for popping in um but this gal stephanie who has the um deliberately creative channel one of her videos and i can't remember which one she was going to tell us what pencil sharpener she uses and i think it's got some kind of a little clamp that holds the pencil for you i don't think it's an electric i tried electric and that just grinds up your pencil something terrible um especially you know like your color pencils and whatnot i, I hate wasting that so that's why you use the hand crank one. Okay, so for the eyebrow, I just do start doing little hairs going here, there, and everywhere. And I don't know why I'm working just on one side of her face instead of the other. And I always pretty much do females because uh, I just don't know how to do a manly eye. I mean, I, I, I can copy one. But if I am just doing one out of my head, they're usually always just female. And like doing a kid, you can forget that. They're hard. Probably should be a little thicker. Lori, the trick is I was taught years ago, move your sharpener. Yeah, I know, but I have a hard time with that. Um, I don't know. It just doesn't make sense to me. My brain just doesn't. I've tried, but yeah, you're right, Peggy. This is a great community for being encouraged and getting inspiration and how's that looking kids maybe I should catch up the other eyeball what are we at we're at an hour and 30 minutes this is where I usually screw up the nose I just try to come around here make like a little C shape. Eh. The nose and mouth. I, I really need to work more on that. But, you know, I just enjoy doing the eyeballs. And so I usually stop right there. Yes, people can come and go as they see nobody nobody has a nose that straight I don't think unless they've had the surgery And I don't usually do everything in the same order either. I just do however I, you know, whatever I feel like.
Peggy, where can we see some of your stuff? Do you have your stuff posted or do you have a Facebook page or do you have a YouTube channel that you post stuff to? It's nice of Tanya to stop in. I got to figure out where I can see some of Tanya's beads. Holly and I were talking about that earlier. She told me once she had a show somewhere, but that was a while ago, and I never followed through to find her stuff. I post. Oh, I I don't know. Oh, maybe I'm not filing. Okay, maybe I'm not following you. I'll have to check. I haven't been on Instagram much lately. Um, and I don't remember if I'm following you. was telling Peggy I loved her um, business card. And I'm assuming, because that's your little um, picture. And I'm, I want to design some kind of a little thing for my, to do um, business cards. But Peggy, I love that little picture you have there. I guess it's supposed to be your little avatar or whatever. I'm assuming you drew that. She's just darling. I love her little face. I really can't. I can't really adjust my... <clears throat> well, I guess I could, but I got a new phone. The, the light I have above me is for a fish tank. Okay? Okay. But I don't have any background light on. It got dark and I didn't put the other light on. And I can adjust it, but the adjustment, it, it, you download this app on your, your phone. Well, it's on my old phone. My hair was made with a Prolo pad. Really? My business card was a self-portrait I painted and has an... Oh, cool. That's neat. Let's get the old bag going on this side. It's much too big of a bag. Doesn't match the other side. I'm working on a journal cover. Holly was helping me with that earlier too. <clears throat> I'm trying to get my thoughts together for getting the pages together inside. 
and I was asking my girlfriend Jean, of course, her opinion was different than our opinion, Holly, but I think I'll ask a few more people, maybe my sisters, what they think. Nancy's always always well Jackie too, but Nancy's Nancy's my manager. So I always ask her opinion. Nancy's very talented with home decor and floral design, those kinds of things. Well, I guess our bags aren't really the same, really. You know, like our, our bags on our faces. Well, Miss Sharon, I would love to talk to you, too. And a lot of times we chat, you know, on our special line. But you never answer, okay? Just saying. It's kind of hard to talk to a vapor. All right. I think I want to try at some point. Of course, I'll have to have a picture that I'm looking at. Hmm, I got that real and the other one I don't. Uh, <laughs> How many people? Oh, we have 11 people. Oh, that's not too bad for a no name, right? Bye, Candy. Thanks for hanging out with us. We'll see you probably somewhere tomorrow. Take care. It's like when somebody like Tanya stops in, it's like, or Laura, it's like a celebrity, okay? It's, it's almost to me like a celebrity has dropped in, okay? I'm just saying. All right, let's see. Okay, now I want to do some darker under here hook that under my computer page I put a little dot there I didn't mean to Got it. I just think I have to look at noses more. Staring at people. <laughs> yes. Yes. That would be the ultimate lurking. Just doing a nose study, nothing personal. I'm giving this chick like really. Thrillery kind of looking. Almost looks like little weed type of eyebrows. <gasps> A 
Like, and I don't know how to really make them. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> um, I don't know how to make. Okay, so a pair of eyes is, are one thing, but like you look at some of these gals that do the, these drawings for these coloring books and their little faces and stuff are so beautiful. Like, how do you get from, you know, drawing just a pair of eyes to making it look like, you know, a human and, or like a cute little kid with a flower on its head? Hmm, I don't know. See, I'm just not connecting all the dots, kids. Just not connecting all the dots. Hmm. By the time I get there, I probably will be too old to hold a pencil, let alone sharpen the darn thing. You know? You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Okay. All right. <laughs> I don't think my cats ever stop shedding. <laughs> Thank you, Sharon. I like the blue hearts. All right, we're coming down the home stretch, I think, here. Okay, so then I just kind of start putting little lines and pulling some hairs right on that ledge. And they're kind of light. I don't know if you can see. I kind of, I have a ghetto camera. I'm going to try again what Dee Dee said. Dee Dee says... And I have the down the software downloaded, but I am not able to use my Logitech software at the same time as I use um, YouTube. It won't let me use them both at the same time. So I don't have any Zoom or anything. I have to manually bring my camera down. Sharon? Wasn't that guy, wasn't that the guy that stole his wife's art as his own? You will get your style. Remember Keen? Oh, no, I don't remember him. He did kids with big eyes. Hmm. Now I moved my camera where I can't see the screen. That's my little moon man. Oh. Not good. It's like, you know how pencil, when you're looking at it a certain way, there's just a big glare and a big sheen. I'm going to get these. All right, I use, when I paint, um light bulbs and when i used to paint ceramic you know like not real eyes just like whatever cartoony kind of eyes i always did usually an eye like this and then i would put one big lash in the center and then go from there so i kind of do the same thing when i'm doing these eyes because i probably should use a thicker pencil. I try not to go up too far beyond that crease because I don't think that's probably accurate. I'm going to try to thicken them up and make some go crazy.
and they're not straight. I just give them a little, um, a little bit of a curve. to see what color pencil I have here because I I have most of my color pencils in the other room. I don't know if that'll work over the uh, <laughs> Sharon. Sharon, you are such an encourager to me. Thank you. Yeah, that yeah, I do that too sometimes, Peggy. I'm just really, um, oh, that's better if I. I'm trying to get them to look a little bit, you know, like they belong to the same face. This is usually where I flip it. For years, I did it with a paintbrush. So I, a lot of times I just feel like I should get up a paintbrush. I feel more comfortable. I don't know why I picked a stinking small book like this to do all these eyeballs in. I still think maybe my pupils need to be a little bigger. Uh -huh. All right, I think I'm coming down the home stretch. Let's see. Take a little color out. Well, that's true, I guess, but is Joy still here? How's the thunder? See if I have my number six or my number eight out here. This would be a lot, would go a lot easier. Trying to get this real dark spot. I'm hoping I have a, uh, oh, I think I have one in my box. Posted Harker came to your messenger. Big eyes. Okay, thanks, Holly. Almost stopped now. Okay. Let's see how long it takes to get here. All right. And so I think. 
paint. Hopefully I don't screw this up. This is just the black marking the zebra pen, you know, in Japanese that I got a while ago from Jed Pens. And, you know, I can't really do the printing. Kathy Arbor, hello. See, this is another celebrity that has stopped in to say hi. How exciting. We are getting slammed with rain. We've never, oh. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's crazy here. Yes, Kathy, I was talking about things I learned from you when you were teaching us about making drawing faces. These are different shapes. And sometimes I'll take a black marker and just do like a big, you know, like eyeliner line. Mm -hmm. Just, you know, whatever I feel like. And Stephanie that does my um, deliberately creative, she likes these eco pens. I, I'm really, I don't really get the eco pen part because, oh, I hope this one works. Um, this is all, I guess, you know, biodegradable. You can just take the guts out and, you know, this will just eventually disintegrate. And then you just have to throw this part out. So, but I don't really, I guess it just is less. Oh, me, oh, you too, Kathy? Oh, I'm glad I'm not alone. Anyway, this is a really great pen for doodling or anything. It gives you a really, a really fine. And it flows really nice. I guess anywhere you can um, cut down on what doesn't totally disintegrate is good so i guess that's maybe that's it but these babies will stab you it's a crazy setup because there's no the lid is open and i i gave one to my granddaughter who's five duh wasn't thinking and she poked that right through the end and stabbed it in her hand no blood so we were thankful for that but if you do use these um and I'm just going to, on her, I'm going to put, if I can get this one to, some of them, it's, you have a little trouble getting some of them to go. Once they go, man, it's cool. Oh, and it comes with this little teeny, I started saving this little teeny minuscule cap because then it protects your finger if you forget. Sometimes after I start doing it, I think, oh, I guess that wasn't the best decision. Oh, well. And here I'm going to just put... Friends Inspire. And then I have to get a little white... And my Posca pens, I think, come from a different place than Dee Dee's Posca pens. I'm just saying, mine don't work like hers. Maybe I don't shake it enough. I am too heavy-handed for a fine top pen. Micro pens are getting me to win. I have a car. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I didn't warn Holly. We did warn Sharon, though, because Sharon tends to... um. 
you know, get more injured than most of us. She can't be trusted with sharp objects, so I thought to warn her. And then I started shaking one of these Poscas the other day. I had white, white dots everywhere. I don't know, girls. I just don't know. Sometimes I just get out my white paint. It's easier. I'm just going to give her a little... sure I like that but and then I'm just gonna put today eight five twenty number thirty nine I got a long way to go Brooke was complaining about the same thing, Pasca leakage. Yes. I mean, I, that's the first time I had it happen to me. Well, I think that's it for me, girls. Thanks for hanging out with me and looking at my hankies. I think I'm going to go make a coffee and get in my chair. And... See how long it takes for that thunder and rain to get here. Never water ski in the kitchen. Okay, good tip. Thank you. All right, ladies, thank you for joining me. And I would just like to say, take time to be creative. Enjoy the journey. And I will see you next time. Thanks, girls. Take care. Thanks for stopping in, Kathy. What a treat. Thanks so much. All right, ladies. Thanks for joining me. We'll see you all soon. Take care. Be safe. Bye-bye.